Jeff Tolleson, this is your happy birthday video. So we're letting everybody know that you're 41, which in binary is 101001. So we got some math, fish, and other things to talk about today in celebration of your very special day. I hope you're enjoying your vacation. We wish that we were with you. If there's any background noise, it's because sacred guinea pigs are over there right now doing their little thing. And you'll see some videos about that uh, some other time. So let's start off with a few things about the number 41. As you know, 41 is a prime number and is one of my favorite prime numbers. In fact, it's a special one because it is not only is a prime number, but it's also what's called a, uh, a twin prime because it's only two away from another prime number, 43, which is another really cool prime number. In fact, it is also known as a prime triplet. A prime triplet is where you have a prime and then some situation like this. We got a prime number, we got two away from a, that prime number and maybe six away from that prime number. And uh, this is the closest that, that three primes can be to one another. You got multiples of five, multiples of seven, multiples of three in there, so you can't get some of these other numbers. But it's a triple prime as well, along with 43 and 47. Um, let me quickly talk about a few things that are cool about it in terms of some things that you would add up to get 43. If you take the very the first six prime numbers, which are two, three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. That equals forty-one. Or if you were to take three consecutive prime numbers, eleven, thirteen, and seventeen, which are also a prime triplet, that equals forty-one as well. And that is pretty cool. There are a lot of special types of prime numbers that you can have. Uh, one of my favorites are called Mersenne primes. This is not one of those. Uh, this prime is called a Sophie Germain prime. And it's a Sophie Germain prime if that number P, 41 in this case, is uh, two plus, two P plus one is also a prime number, then it's a Sophie Germain prime. So in this case, if P is 41, two P plus one is 83, which is also prime, which is cool. And, 41 is a factor of 99,999. It's actually times uh, 2,439. It's the sum of two squares. Four squared plus five squared equals 41. A couple of presidential factoids here. Uh, first one is that president number 41 was George H.W. Uh, Bush. 41st president. And then there is a class of submarines that were called the George Washington class. And they were developed in, the, I think, the late 50s or early 60s as a deterrent in the Cold War. Um, they were the first one that was a faster, uh, a faster submarine that could carry up to 16 nuclear warheads, which was way more than the Russians could put on a sub. Uh, it took maybe 15 years for the Russians to catch up to them. The reason why that's important here with the number 41 is because they made 41 of them and they called them 41 for freedom, George Washington class of submarines. If we go to chemistry, we find that element number 41 right here, niobium, has got some really cool special things about it. It's element 41. It is a transition metal, which means it's kind of boring. Most transition metals are silver and uh, crystalline this one is light gray crystalline and ductile and it is as as hard as titanium and as ductile as iron it oxidizes pretty slowly which means that it doesn't like change color uh, doesn't react with oxygen very easily and because of that it is used as a hypoallergenic alternative to nickel in jewelry it's used in alloys to strengthen steel. They use it in things like gas pipelines and that it is a superconducting alloy. They even use it in things like 
uh, like MRI scanners. So it has a lot of cool properties. Number 41, niobium. Pop culture time. Uh, Dave Matthews Band wrote a song called Number 41. I listened to it. I didn't really understand what it was about. Um, I did listen to about half of uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Symphony 41, which was his last and considered by many people to be his best uh, symphony. Uh, Charlton Heston was uh, slave number 41 in uh, the movie Ben-Hur. Morpheus from the Matrix, the original Matrix movie, he was being held by the agents in question on um, on level 41 of the building. That's the one he jumped out the window onto the helicopter. So that's pretty important there as well. And a connection with my first real job at uh, Dimples. It was an indoor miniature golf place. Uh, they had this arcade game called Daytona USA. You may have heard it. Uh, the song was just stuck in my head after working there for, for too long. Um, there's one car in there that was uh, Team Hornet, and it was always race, uh, had race number 41 on it. So there you go, that video game, which you probably played all the time as an eighth grader. If you got anybody in Switzerland to call, you're going to have to use the uh, international direct dialing code 41. There you go again, Swiss phone calls, you're going to have to put a 41 in there first. And then probably one of my favorites of all like the pop culture types of things is that this guy here, Roger Bannister, was wearing bib number 41 when he broke the uh, four minute mile barrier. Uh, he ran it in 359.4 or 6, I believe. But uh, I read a cool book by Neil Bascom. He was an investigative journalist, he wrote a lot of sports things. He also wrote stuff on catching Nazis, but he wrote a book called The Perfect Mile that had uh, that on the cover with Roger Bannister uh, finishing the race there in under four minutes. Finish with a couple of mathy types of things. We're going to have Johnson Solid number 41. I know that you've got a small collection of these things. This one here is called an elongated, so it's kind of longer on the top, pentagonal. You can see the pentagons the gyro cupola rotunda it's got uh 15 squares on it it has uh seven regular pentagons six on this side and one on that side and 15 equilateral triangles so i'll leave uh, this gem for you in your office for when you get back we'll, we'll finish here with a couple of really fun math things. First one is that 41 is one of Euler's lucky numbers. Now my homeboy Euler here, Christian mathematician guy, one of the top five Euler. Spoiler. Silly children. Um, it's one of these things where if you plug it into, oh, there's my bell. If you plug it into uh, like a, a polynomial, into an equation, I'll, I'll write one for you here. It's f of n, n meaning a number, and minus n plus 41. Okay, so here's our math rule. If you plug in any number from 1 up to the number 41, it will generate a list of prime numbers and only prime numbers. So for example, if we plug in a 1 into our little equation, we'll get 1 minus 1 plus 41 equals 41. Okay, obviously. And then if we plug in a 2, we'll get 4 minus 2 plus 41, which is 43. And the pattern will continue for the next 39 numbers, so 41 numbers in a row with this particular little lucky number formula is going to produce a prime number. Let me get my calculator out and I'll show you that list. 
we got in function mode. I got two functions that this will work with, either a minus x or a plus x. And uh, I'll go to the table here, and you can see that if I plug in a 1, I get 41 and 43. All these numbers in this list are prime numbers. And as I said, if we go all the way down to n or x is 41, all every single number in this list is a beautiful, tasty prime number. When we get down to this one, uh, no, when we get down to this one, that's 41 squared. So then it breaks the pattern. But fun thing about this, we can look at it in different ways. If I change the mode here to uh, to sequential mode, then uh, then this is the way that it looks. And it creates a pretty dandy graph where you can see all of those numbers and how it makes this beautiful curve that all those prime numbers are related to one another, each other by uh, this equation n squared minus n plus 41. Related to that equation there I'm going to talk about this Polish mathematician named Stanislaw Ulam. The story is that he was at a really boring math conference which I can't imagine uh, but he started to write out uh, the numbers, the uh, integers, starting at 41 in a, in a spiral shape. Now, you can do it with, with anything. You can start with 1 in the middle, but write it in a spiral pattern. I've done this with 41. I've gone up to 423, just because I got kind of bored with writing this stuff. And um, if you remember that list of numbers that we just had, they can be found along this diagonal here. And I extended it to include even more of those prime numbers. But all of the ones that we just had on that list, n squared minus n plus 40, uh, 41, can all be found on uh, this diagonal if you write the numbers in a spirally kind of pattern like that. Now, there are other prime numbers. I'll fill that in in a minute. You can just see that that's a pretty powerful equation that generates all those prime numbers right in a row. That's so cool. Okay, so I've highlighted the other primes, and they do kind of look a little bit more random, though there are some lines here that we'll see, though there are gaps. Maybe you'll see another one it's like here. There are more uh, polynomials that describe those. They're kind of like eigenvectors, if you don't know what those are. But this one definitely is every single one. There are 41 of them uh, will all be generated by that one polynomial, n squared minus n plus 41. So that's pretty cool. There, there aren't a whole lot as special as 41. So there you are. That's it for this year. Uh, you're a year older. You look about five years older. A little more gray this time, but... We hope that you're enjoying your vacation. You'll come back relaxed and refreshed and rejuvenated to get back to the work of whatever it is that you get paid for. So, bless you. Hey, be quiet. Bless you. We look forward to seeing you uh, back soon. I want to wish you a very happy birthday, blessed friend. All right. Look, there's Meredith. She didn't want me to do that, but I did it anyway. All right. Have a happy birthday.